السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته سوف نحاول أن نجيب عن السؤال هل القرآن كلام الله اليوم إن شاء الله مع شهادة الدكتور موريس بوكاي صاحب كتاب القرآن والإنجيل والعلم على بركة الله Let us consider for example these verse in the Suha Al-Zumar ألم ترى أن الله أنزل من السماء ماء فسلكه ينبيا في الأرض ثم يخرج به زرعا مختلفا ألوانه Art thou not seen that God sent water down from the sky and let it through sources into the ground then he causes sown fields of different colors to grow We must compare one of the aspects of the water cycle to which this verse alludes and other details about it given in the Quran with the ideas prevalent long ago. The first Korean description of the water cycle in nature dates back to the 16th century with Bernard Palissy. Prior to this, people talked about the theory whereby The waters of the oceans, under the effect of winds, were thrust to the interior of the continents. They then returned to the oceans via the great abyss, the Tartarus of Plato. In the 17th century, Descartes still believed in it, and even in the 19th century, there was talk of the theory according to which Water was condensed in cool mountain caverns, forming underground lakes that fed the springs. Today we know that the infiltration of rainwater is responsible for this. But more than anything else, I, w I have been impressed at first by statements in the Quran dealing with living beings, the animal and vegetable kingdoms especially with regard to the origin of life, the origin of man and reproduction. It is only since modern times that scientific progress has made the content of many such verses comprehensible to us. The ancient commentators presented them according to their apparent meaning, which was of the utmost importance, of course, since it evokes divine omnipotence, but they could not give a view of their real meaning. Lacking essential scientific knowledge, which is necessary to understand it, even today, numerous translations and commentaries of the Quran, made by men with only a literary background, give a mistaken view of their real meaning. Only a scientist is able to give an explanation. The biological allusion in the Quran are highly significant. Such is the case of a verse of the Surah Al-Anbiya, a part of which has already been quoted. Awalam yara al-lazina kafaru na samawati wal arda kana tarad kan fa fatak nahuma wa jahalna min al-mahi kulla shayin hayin afala yumidu. Do not the believers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clothed them asunder? And we got every living thing out of the water. Will they then not believe? This is an affirmation of the modern idea that the origin of life is aquatic. Progress in botany at the time of the prophet was in no country advanced enough for it to be established as a rule that plants have both male and female parts. Nevertheless, we may read the following in the Surah Taha. Wa anzala mines samai mahan fahakrajna bihi azwajan min nabatin shadda. God is the one who sent water down from the sky and thereby we brought forth elements of couple of plants, elements of couples, of 
plans each separate from the other. In the Surah al rad we read the following. Wa min kulli samarati jahala fiha zaujaini isnaini. Of all fruits God placed on the earth. Two elements of a pair. Zaujaini isnaini. Verse 36 of the Surah Yasin clearly alludes to the existence of components of couples in plants as well as in the human beings whom the verse is referring to. Subuan al lazi ghalak al azwaja kullaha min ma tubitu l'ardu wa min anfusihim wa min ma la yalamun. Glory to him who created the components of couples of every kind or what the ground causes to grow on them, themselves, that is to say human beings, and of what they do not know. In the field of physiology, there is a verse which appears to be extremely significant. But to understand it, we have to know that chemical reactions occur in the intestine and that substances extracted from food inside pass into the bloodstream and that the bloodstream transport them to all the organs of the body among which are the milk producing mammary gland. That is precisely what is said in this verse of the Surah al Verily in cattle there is a lesson for you. We give you to drink what is inside their bodies, coming from a conjunction between the contents of the intestine and the blood, a milk pure and pleasant for those who drink it. The Quranic revelation considerably enriched a man with data about himself, as we shall see. But its teachings have been clearly and completely understood only in modern times. As a medical doctor particularly attracted to the natural sciences and physiology, I must confess that when I read the Quran, Excuse me, when I read the Quran in the original text for the first time, these data concerning man were those which impressed me the most. This is the reason why, as soon as I have finished my first study, the Bible, the Quran, and science, I seized a favorable opportunity to deliver a lecture before the French Academy of Medicine with a special reference to human reproduction in the Quran. In order to carry out a valid comparison, one must remember that there existed a host of superstitions and myths about this topic in days of old and emphasized the absence of any reference in the Quran to the mistaken ideas prevalent at the time of the communication to man. Let us mention that several verses evoke the complexity of the male fertilizing liquid and the fact that an infinitely small quantity of this liquid expressed by Nutfa in the Quran is required to ensure fertilization. This is also expressed by quintessence, if I may so translate the Arabic word Sulala. The implantation of the egg in the female genital organ is perfectly described in several verses by the word alak, as in the surah al-alak. Halak al insana min alak. But my translation is the following one. God fashioned the man from something which claims. I do not think that there is any accurate translation of the word alak, other than to use its, once more, its primitive meaning. To speak here of an adherence 
of a blood clot is a mistake. They are both derivative meanings quite out of place in this context. The evolution of the embryo inside the maternal uterus is a subject of reflection whose simple words correspond exactly to fundamental stages in its growth as it appears in this verse of the Surah al muminu Far al-Aknal al mudratan we fashioned the thing which cling into a shoot lump of flesh, and we fashioned the shoot flesh into bones, and we clothed the bones with intact flesh. Thus, an initial aspect of the embryo is evoked, and thereafter the muscles covering the bones. We know that the embryo passes through a stage when some of its parts are out of proportion with what is later to become the individual. The Surah El Hajj seems to allude to this. We fashioned you into something which cleans into a lump of flesh in proportion and out of proportion. In the Surah El Sajda, there is a reference to the senses and the viscera. Wa ja'ala lakum al sama wal absara wal afidata. God appointed for you the senses of hearing, sight, and the viscera. All these quotations are in harmony with what was to be discovered many centuries later. In view of the state of knowledge in Prophet Muhammad's day, it is inconceivable that many of the statements in the Quran which are connected with signs could have been the work of a man. It is therefore perfectly legitimate not only to regard the Quran as the expression of a revelation, but also to award it a very special place on account of the guarantee of authenticity it provides and the presence in it of reflections, which, when studied today, appear as a challenge to human explanation. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for your kind attention. Assalamu alaikum.